Welcome to the Getting Real with Grady Jarrett podcast. Grady and I have the luxury of having on a very special guest today, and that is Jalen Rose, taking some time out of his busy schedule with the NBA playoffs in full swing, taking some time for us. So Jalen, we really appreciate having you on, and we're really looking forward to having this conversation with you. And Grady and I were excited about having you on because Grady and I started this podcast uh, about a month ago, and one of our goals was to get our fan base uh, more in tune with who Grady is as a person, but also to kind of show Grady the ropes of what the media life is like as he obviously is still in, in the thick of his career, but just, you know, for after his career, if he decides that this could be potentially something he wants to do, and there's no better person who made that transition from a professional career to becoming one of the media stars. So Absolutely. I'll just start and Grady, you can take it from here, but how how did the transition happen for you and can you just fill us in on on your journey um thanks for having me on i appreciate the love um working in multimedia is actually something i always wanted to do okay. um as a player i was really outspoken and a trash talker i'm um, playing video games the exact same way yeah. and uh growing up in my household and around my family members and my uncles and stuff like that when you lost a video game, you couldn't just like walk off or fall asleep. You had to stay there and commentate the next game. <laughs> oh, okay. Everybody in cage. And you know, if it's one TV in the house, it get real when you lose a game. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you like four or five games or something like that. And so I went to college for it at the University of Michigan. And it was what I always wanted to do. I was playing in the league, a member of the Pacers. We made it to the 2000 finals. Yeah. And then like 2002, I got traded to the Bulls. And at that time, it was February. They had nine wins and the worst record in the league. So I was like, oh, I guess we ain't going to the playoffs these <laughs> next couple of years. So I was like, since I will be free during playoff time, I had to be a couple of BT interviews and uh, was on Mad Sports and 106 in Park. And I had a couple of friends over there. So I pitched them an idea to cover the finals for them. I said, just send the camera. I got the access. I had a spot in LA. All y'all got to do is send the camera. Mm. And so they sent the camera. We shot it. It was wow. I'll show you how long ago it was. It was Lakers in New Jersey Nets. So this is like 2002. And mm -hmm. uh, they cut it. They spiced it. They played it on BET. Everybody liked it. I showed that to the best damn sports show at Fox the next year. And then they hired me for a segment called Jamming with Jalen. And I covered the finals for them. So while I was in the league from 2002 to 2007, I was working on every outlet. I was doing NFL Network when it started. Yeah. Cold pizza before it became first take, TNT doing sideline and stuff. And then going to ESPN 2007, they hired me to do NBA. And I appreciate the opportunity, but I was only talking NBA because I was on the NBA show, NBA yeah, Tonight. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I don't want to just talk about NBA. It's just way more going on in my head that I'm not yeah, letting them put you in the box. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I pitched the idea to Bill Simmons at Grantland at the time for me to do a podcast. And respectfully, I'm so very happy to see you doing your podcast. Congratulations. Sure, thank you. And so many other former athletes actually doing it because I was the first former athlete to have a podcast. Mm -hmm, I was right. doing it on Periscope way, yeah, before, wow. yeah. Apple, way before it was Spotify. Yeah. And so, like breaking down barriers, like putting the background up when I had, you know, the Ali Summit and Tommy Smith and John Carlos and having Harriet Tubman and all of that, I wanted the imagery to represent us. Yeah, without so, a doubt. This is 10 years in the game and it grew from a podcast to a, a late night TV show to an ESPN 2 show. And so now we on ESPN every day and I can't, yes, sir. I look down at the guy and I'm like, we come on at the sports center? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm like, I'm waiting to get the email that somebody's gonna be like, all right, y'all, we need to put them back on ESPN too. Like Jalen <laughs> He got a racket on his head. He got Ice Cube Doughboy in the background. But in all man. honesty, it's been a lot of love and uh, it's been a great journey. Yeah, well, I can tell you, man, it's been, you know, me, you know, watching TV, I love to, I love to hear your takes. You always keep it real, man. I always love. So I know when you, I know when, I know when you're saying it, I know it's facts. And I'm not just saying that because you're on a podcast, man. Oh. So I definitely appreciate you coming in. So um, you said something really important, man. I think it's really, really, really um, good for guys, you know, in the position that I'm in now, you know, being in the prime of your career, 
you were always working, you know? Um, you took you took advantage of that downtime. You just wasn't sitting back kicking it. Like, and you had a plan. You knew what you wanted to do. Just, just you know, how, how hard was it? Or, you know, what was that thing that just kept you focused on? Like, let me just not be comfortable. Cause you always was a great player, but that was never enough for you. How, how did you um, use the things you learned on that, on the court, you know, to, to keep that competitive drive off, off the court and, uh, you know, transfer that into um, what you're doing now? Absolutely. So really early, like, in, you know, in order to do this, you got to tell yourself that you're going to be an all time great. Yeah, then, absolutely. Get to all time great. Even though you're the underdog, you're going to find a way to make a name for yourself against them. Mm -hmm. And that's just what being an athlete is about. Yes, sir. And I got humbled real quick because while I was Jalen Rose and I appreciated all of the accolades that came with it, my goal was to be Magic Johnson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I realized I wasn't Magic, that kept me humble. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Else felt about me. I'm like, you ain't Magic, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it kept you driving for something, though. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, it, it's always somebody out there. You know what they be like? You know, well, somebody gonna tell you you ain't this, you ain't that. But in your mind, to I feel like to have success, you gotta feel like you're the best. You know, even if I'm everybody telling you the trash and this and that at the highest level of your sport, for you preparing, you're not working as hard as you work just to make it. You know what I'm saying? Just to survive, you wanna excel you want to you know and at the end of the day you end up where you end up but i always tell people you know do your best and let the rest take care of itself you end up where you're supposed to end up you won't have any regrets so yeah yeah i definitely definitely and, feel and, that and i was just outside hooping with my nephew and like i, I was listening to j cole and mm -hmm. one of my favorite songs on there is 100 mil and i'm still on the grind yep i can relate to that so much for my life yeah because I'm first generation moved the family to the suburbs. Yeah. It wasn't like when I got drafted, my mother already had a house, you know, mm -hmm. my brothers and sisters were already going to private school. My family wasn't like that. Yeah. So we had to live via my opportunity to go to the NBA. And yeah. so now that I work in the media and I have that as a backdrop, it's like, I got to continue to do what I can to give back, pull my people up Absolutely. and change the dynamics of the legacy of my family. Absolutely. And so that's what keeps me focused and that's what keeps me disciplined. Yeah, man. It's like the more success that, 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 that you get. And, you know, I feel the same way myself. It's like, it just motivate me to go harder. You know, even like after I signed my big deal, you know, my best years came after that and they're going to keep coming, you know, before I signed my deal, I, I never made it to a pro bowl. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm, I'm just made two in a row. You know, I became all pro. And I, I could, thank you, man. I'm a huge fan, by the way. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate that. So, um, so just, just that, that, that hundred mil mindset, just, it don't stop. You know what I'm saying? And they're talking, <laughs> oh man, the, the guy, he got a song. He was like, man, I ain't did nothing till I touched that hundred mil. So <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I still ain't got the hundred contract. So look, we going to keep grinding for that. You know what I'm saying? We talked about it here first with Jalen. So, um, so yeah, man, um, Kelsey, you, Kelsey, you got a couple of yeah. um, things you want to touch on. So before we get to what you were talking about, Jalen, about giving back, um, and I, I want to get to that in a little bit because I don't, you probably don't know this, um, but Grady is very, very active in the community in terms of giving back. He grew up in Conyers, Georgia, and he's been in Atlanta his whole life. And one of the coolest things about Grady is his draft story, he, he can t fill you in all on that, but uh, Grady's house burned down on his draft weekend and he didn't get drafted where he thought he was going to get drafted. And it was a weekend that I think, like you said, humbled, humbled Grady absolutely, um, absolutely. and drove him to be where he is, but he has taken his platform and all that he does in the community with his Grady gives program. I think I want to hear from both of you guys about just how important that is. But before we get there, I just had a couple questions um, that I, that I wanted to ask you. You've talked about your journey to how you got to having your own show. And of course, all of the ventures that you do, what has been your favorite job so far, whether it's been the sideline reporting, your gig on Get Up, um, your podcast slash show that you have with Jacoby, um, or being on NBA Countdown? What's been your favorite? I think uh, <clears throat> Jalen and Jacoby is, is like my baby. Yeah. It's like something that um, came from the mud. It was like, I was watching the media landscape and at the time, 
you know, there weren't as many outlets clearly as it is now, and it wasn't social media. And I didn't feel like the athletic voice and the, and, and colored people in multimedia that had big platforms were being expressed properly. And I felt like if I got the opportunity, I was going to do that. I noticed that at radio shows would probably have like bobbleheads in the background or helmets or like sports illustrated models and stuff look like, like that. Yeah. And so I remember talking to Bill and I was like, when I do the podcast, you're going to come in here one day and it, these walls going to look a lot different. Yeah. And, and, and I waited like about three or four, you know, months before I did it. And I just started ordering pictures. And one of my favorite pictures at the time, it was like Jay-Z with a gold tooth and a big rope chain. <laughs> and his, yep. his, uh, yeah, his box wasn't freshly done. It looked like he just came from the trap house yep. and did a reasonable <laughs> doubt. And that's the guy that's a billionaire and married to Beyonce. Mm -hmm. So that was the image that I had up at first. Mm -hmm. And so as we started to get more popular, the people whose pictures those were started calling and yeah. wanted to get paid for them. That's and the then I was like, oh, okay, so we're growing into something. And so really for me, the opportunity to have a podcast is just to be free, just to express myself, to show a different side of myself. Um, Grady's doing that also. And I got a unique example for that. Okay. Right now, Kwame Brown, mm -hmm. right? You never saw him speak when he was a player. Yeah. And so whatever he's saying, whether you agree or disagree, and I ain't here to put myself in no mess. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost 50 years old, yeah. okay? I ain't trying. But what I'm saying is he's an example of an athlete that you didn't really hear him speak. So a lot of times you underestimate how he feels and what he might have to say. Yeah, without a doubt. And that's why it's important for you to do this while you're still an all pro, mm -hmm. because you're not in a position of need. Yeah. They know you're getting top dollar. Yeah. They know you're still balling. They're calling you to do interviews. Yeah. So now you can parlay that and say, okay, I'll come on your show. You come on my show. Yeah, without or a doubt. when you talk about me on your show, make sure you mention the other things that I'm doing. Make sure you mention what I'm doing in the community. Without a doubt. And so breaking down those barriers is important for us to do that, especially if we can be unfiltered. Of course, yeah. when you're working in corporate America, there's always a line you got to cross. Mm -hmm. Go get a check from the NBA or the NFL or ESPN or a multimedia conglomerate. There's a way you can be professional without compromising your integrity. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think I think that's 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 so big because a lot of guys, when we in it, um, everybody you know so comfortable in their bubble where you'd be like, you know, oh, I'll do it out later. You know, I'll deal with that later. You know, and then later comes. And it's like, uh, well, you know, it's me. You don't, you don't want to talk to me no more. And they're like, <laughs> people really like, no, we straight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I just see it outside looking in or just seeing guys that's before me, you know, trying so hard to reach back into things. And I just think, you know, it, why not, you know, get the fans or, or the people listening another, uh, some more insight to you? Because, I mean, that's how I am. Like, I'm, I'm for me to be doing a podcast, man, it's, it's, it's big. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm so comfortable in my bubble, you know what I'm saying? And, I know I wanted to challenge myself. I know I got some great things to offer with just, just being myself, you know, and then that's, that's, that's really, um, that's really what inspires me. And I, you know, appreciate you, man, trailblazing that way. Like, you know, I, I didn't know that you, you was the first, you know, to really start the podcast stuff. That's, that's, that's crazy. When I came. Another secret, by the way, my, my family has lived, my kids have lived in Georgia since 2002. Okay. Got a spot now for Retta, go to GAC. Yeah. My, my oldest daughter is currently a junior at Georgia, and my youngest is finishing her freshman year. Nice. So we are Falcon and Hawks fan. Okay. I've okay. been to a lot of your games. All right. And just so you also know, maybe I've been to some of the places that Lou will like to hang out to. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Uh, Jalen, uh, you know, I'm one more thought on your media career before we move on. But when I came to Grady about the podcast idea, I, I got the idea because I saw Russell Wilson had a podcast and what he's done with that on YouTube. JJ Reddick, I've listened to his podcast. I think it's just, and with like, you know, you see it with like the way Juju Smith-Schuster has made a brand for himself because of his TikToking. Like if you can kind of, make a name for yourself with something else besides your football career. It just, 
it just makes people know you more and they, they might not remember what they saw on you on the field, but they remember, Oh, doesn't Grady have a podcast. So when you said that, like you trailblaze, I mean, I think it's awesome. And I I think that this is the way that things are going to continue to go where you saw like JJ Watt breaking his news that he was going to sign with the Cardinals on Twitter. He's like, you know what? It's my story to tell. I'm not giving this to any reporter. And I think that since, you know, you kind of started this, this way of, you know, players being able to speak more freely and have their own platform, I really see it becoming the norm. So it's really cool to hear that that was something that, you know, you started. Thank you. I appreciate that. And and, and the other thing is a lot of times if you're not quotable as a player, you probably won't be quotable when you retire. Yeah. So this is your chance to practice too. Yeah, without a doubt. You know what I'm saying? Like make your mistakes to craft your voice. Because here's the thing, a lot of people are saying stuff, impression sin and posting on IG and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. The the way you gain credibility ain't even by having like a lot of people follow you. It's by when you speak, people know that you speaking speaking the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Because you want your your commentary to age well. Yeah. And so I can't front, I'm looking back at a lot of Kwame posts and I'm looking back at a lot of my videos that people are posting about what I had to say about him and Russell Westbrook. And Russell Westbrook just averaged a triple-double for the fourth time. Yeah. And I see what he kind of dealing with. I'm like, I'm glad those aged well. Yeah. And that's no what you want. So you don't have to try to feel like you need to you reach. Gotta, and yeah, yeah, then you're talking, you talking back on yourself and you know contradicting <laughs> and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah, so yes. you definitely want to be <laughs> careful yes. what you put out there and but be yes. accurate and truthful, you know. Yes, every moment ain't ain't and shouldn't be a viral moment. Yeah, like you create quality content, yeah, worthy. That's when people will come back, and then boom, something big will happen. And oh boom, you say this and people catch on to it. Not not the oh, I'm gonna go into the studio and I'm gonna yeah. create a song. You, you can feel it when it's not authentic before yeah. we put the song out, and then now we put the song out with a dance and yeah. we don't even know the people like the song yeah yeah no you can feel it you can feel it though you know just being a being a listener and just being a you know consumer you know just just media stuff as a you know away from the field and stuff you you can feel when something is is authentic or when something like planned and it, like like and it's just the worst to be in that seat when you just been talking all this mess about something or just just talking on something you really don't know about and you got to come back and eat them words man and then not everything you look like you just just blowing smoke you know what i'm saying you don't want to put that on your name I just, and that's what i appreciate about watching you man I, I, yeah I, I, I for real appreciate that yeah hey, you in the foxhole though and so just think about this if you gain this knowledge and experience you're already a smart dude you're already an intelligent dude now you're getting this experience it's just going to put you in a position when your your resume on the desk and somebody else's resume on the desk that ain't gonna have your background yeah, ain't gonna have your experience. They can't call former coaches or former players or former teammates. Mm-hmm. And here's the other thing that people are gonna appreciate about you that they better respect about players in the media. We really only say like twenty percent of what we really know. Oh yeah, and that's how the other players respect you. Yeah, because they like, I know he could have said what he yeah. really know, but he ain't said it. Yeah, without I rock. I rock with him. Yeah. So it ain't like, yo, such and such had 10 turnovers. What do you think happened last night? And I'd be like, well, last night we was in the A and, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't do that. Yeah, you no, see you don't do saying? that. Yeah, so now when you go on and do your commentary and the players see that when they have a good game, you're showing them love. Mm-hmm. And then when they have a bad game, you call them out. Mm-hmm. But you don't say what you really know. Yeah. That's how you get the respect. Yeah, without a doubt. It ain't without personal. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I think one of the many reasons that I really enjoy listening to your show, and I know my brother listens to it as well, is you're just yourself, and it, it kind of seems like you're just sitting down, and this is what Grady and I wanted on a podcast. We didn't want it to seem scripted. You're just giving your thoughts, and I think that that's an important, and it's and it's a hard line to, to dance, but I feel like before we move on, I feel personally like i'm a big nba person i i have to ask you the 30 for 30 that you produced um one of maybe the best things you've ever done in terms of your media career can you tell grady and i a little bit about how you got into the role of being a producer there so at the university of michigan my major was communications radio tv film 
So I'm actually one of the people in the United States that actually has a job in the major that they went to school for. Mm -hmm. Usually somebody has a major in school, but end up working in a different field yep. for whatever reason. Yep. I actually got a chance to work in the field. So those are the things that I do. Like currently I write a column each Thursday in the New York Post mm -hmm. called Renaissance Man. Mm -hmm. I've been doing it since September. I've had Adam Silver, Mark Cuban, Nas, Magic Johnson on the show, um, Katie Couric. It's it's been a, a, a terrific opportunity for me to not only write for the post and be a columnist and like to curate and create content and have a theme and, a, and an intro and an outro and do a last call and do a rapid fire and stuff like that. And so to do that and to do a podcast, it's uh, it, it, an opportunity to show versatility in the game. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you really want to do. And, and he said it earlier, you don't want as an athlete, it's like people are quick to put you in the box. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it's like the shut up and dribble theory. Yeah. It's like, why do I have an opinion about politics? Yeah. Or why should I have an opinion about being a cook or a chef? Well, I'm a taxpaying citizen. Absolutely. I got an opinion because I can say what I want to say when I want to say it. Absolutely. And, and, and especially if it's an informed opinion. And so producing is something I always wanted to do. So radio and, and, and podcasts is something I'm doing. Writing is something I'm doing. You mentioned the shows I'm doing. And so uh, production, I started three tier entertainment. And the first thing I did, and I got it from uh, Tyler Perry, cause he was starting at the same time almost. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I created a play called The Greatest Love Story Ever Told. And he had Tatiana Horsford, and uh, James Avery at the time, he had started having some health issues, so he couldn't really tour with the play. Mm -hmm. But it was on the Chitlin circuit, and I was touring the play. And the story of Mary and Joseph is basically what it was. The story of Mary and Joseph in the Bible is yeah. what the play was about, but it was a comedic view to it. Okay. So that was like one of the first tours that I had oh, that's um, awesome. in producing stuff. And I produced a couple of things for Jeep with Chris Paul. And then I pitched the idea to ESPN to uh, do the Fab Five doc. And the thing that I really like is the director, Jason Ayer, that was his first project. Mm. He just did The Last Dance. So just to yeah. watch, wow. Wow. we hire him at ESPN and then now him to be in a position to do that. Or like Aaron Cohen, who's a writer, has gone on to do like 10 or 12 more projects with ESPN. Yeah. So like these are the people that my production company hired to work on to do this project. And then we shot it and yeah. uh, we were really proud of it. And it was supposed to have two endings. It was going to be one ending. If Sewell did a, a current in a more current interview, mm -hmm. I wanted it to be like us with zoot suits winning the game of life, mob style, big champagne bottles, lobster, yeah. everything on the table. Like I wanted it to look like a, like a Harlem Knights almost at the end. If he oh. was going to, that, that's how like the score of the game and the game of life. Yeah. Without a doubt. I had that. But if he didn't do a current interview, it was going to end kind of like it ended. So uh, I'm really fascinated about, you know, creating projects. I'm actually in talks to do like maybe one or two more. I'll come back and let you know if it gets green lit. You know how it works. Yeah, we know, know, you know, we know you're going to make it happen. Now. We know exactly. you're going to make it happen, man. Like, you're undeniable, man. It. It's on third base. It's on third base. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, we ain't even got to talk about it. We know what's going on. Exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So look, man, everybody listening, man. You 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 step out there, believe in yourself, man. You can be a blessing to somebody else. Like you, you, you chasing your dream, that's gonna help the next person get an opportunity, man. So definitely, definitely don't be afraid, you know, to 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 do do what God put in your heart, man, without a doubt. So um, yeah, Jalen, man, I know you're from Detroit. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you know this. My mom actually from Michigan, she's from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Oh, that's what's up. Yep. Hello, yep. What's up? I get it. I get it on her, man. She never took me up there, man. I, I we talk <laughs> about it all the time. Like she still ain't took me to Michigan. Both my sisters been, and uh, but I guess I when they go, I, I'll be working. I don't know what happened with that. You supposed yeah, to be free. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened with that. But so I know you're real, real tight um, with your community still, mm -hmm. um, even though you know not not being there all the time. Um, can you talk about some of the stuff you got going on there, and like you know, um, you know why it's kind of important for you to stay. And involved with the community, and that's very, um, you know, special to me as well. So, if you could share with the people, absolutely. And again, I got to stress, I've been having a crib in Atlanta for 20 plus years. And now, for red, I bought one at Atlantic Station when they first popped off. Yeah. Like, you, I know you'd make your moves, yeah. In, in the A, I, I salute you, TI, 
Luda, Killer Mike. But he's been on Renaissance Man also. Yeah. Those are my peeps. And so I salute you. But uh, for me, the most important initiative is to be the founder of the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy. It's an open enrollment, tuition-free public charter high school. It not only serves students between ninth and 12th grade, which we currently have 400 students, mm -hmm. but we also support them during secondary education. That's college, university, community college, trade school, military. Mm -hmm. So that's considered a nine through 16 model. Okay. Usually when you graduate from high school, it's throw your hat in the air and your high school don't support you anymore. Yeah. So I wanted to be that bridge that I felt like the eight most important years of young people's lives are the four that they are in high school and the four that they should be in college. Yeah. Like you ask any adult what it goals or dreams went awry, it yeah. usually happens in, in that like window. an eight year window. And so we founded the school in 2011 and I staggered the enrollment so that I could create a culture and a safe learning environment in the community. And the goal is we call it bridging the education gap. I want young people to get $8,000 from the state to be able to compete in the college classroom and compete for the same job as students like my personal student, like my personal kids yeah. who have parents that can afford to pay $40,000 a year for them to go to school yeah. because that becomes an investment K through 12. That's $444,000. That's mm -hmm. a real investment. Without so the 444,000 students versus the 96,000 students, yeah. how do you put them in the same environment and allow them to flourish equally? Yeah. That's kind of the work that we do. Life skills, social skills, etiquette, not just your A's and B's. And also, I'm really into making sure that they develop a trade. So many times, you don't get to just have one job the rest of your life. Yeah. That's unrealistic. I'm trying mm -hmm. to get that out of people's minds. Yeah, you don't have doubt. multiple jobs. You might play for multiple teams. You, it, it, it just, that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. And so you got to be flexible with the times. And our young people have done a terrific job of believing in a vision. And the families and the donors have been terrific supporters of what we do. And I'm really proud of the work we've done uh, over 10 years and run. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome, man. I got a, I got a little something going up like that. You know, I'm out from uh, Conyers, Georgia. It's like, uh, you know, like 20, 30 minutes, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. but I'm creating a Grady Jarrett Teen Center, you know, out there. So, um, you know, basically just giving the people. It. Yeah. They need it, dog. Yep. So that's coming up this year, you know, giving the kids um you know doing sports not sports you know because we're gonna have everything you know for sports but it also rooms for studying and just giving them a safe place to go to and uh whether they need tutor and stuff so that's that's kind of how i'm gonna just get my feet wet you know in, in that in that realm of things but um yeah just just you know i don't know how you do it man man that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> like just 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 you know really having your hands on so much and no no one really no one was going on you know what i'm saying like and uh, but yeah, that's 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 admirable, man. We definitely got to chop it up, chop it off off the podcast, and just uh, you know, you teach uh, me, anything teach me I can years. do to support. Yeah. Like I said, I'll be in the A, yeah. Anything I can do to support, I'll come and, and, and come to represent, be at your spot, meet the kids, speak yeah. to them, do all of that because it's important that we support each other. Yeah. And before I go, I got to ask you a question What's on that? your pod, yeah, because you're one of the best people in the league. Mm -hmm. And I know how this works. Mm -hmm. When you know that y'all gonna draft somebody, there's an email chain of people they might email and they might call and they might FaceTime to make sure that they're happy. And I know that when y'all draft the way y'all drafted at four, mm -hmm. that might mean salary wise, Julio may be getting traded. Mm. Are y'all potentially going to trade the Millennium Falcon, Julio Jones? Man. Man, you know what, Jalen? I don't, I don't know, man. I, I get the, I get the, and I ain't, I ain't blowing smoke at you. I, I get the little steam alerts that everybody get on the bleacher report, you know. <laughs> but I say this, man. I say this. Me growing up in Atlanta, um, and being able to be a teammate with Julio, he's been not only the best at what he do. Period. Since he's been, you know, walked with the Falcons, he's been just a great model for me. And I hopeful that he can continue to be for me on what it is like when you have success and not letting it go like to your head or just always head down to work. Man, my man, when you come to practice, man, as a as a rookie, I'm like, man, this dude right here, boy, like animal, like you can't. I'm talking about Whoa, Julio grinding. You know what I'm saying? So it always it put me in the mode of no, no matter how much success I ever have, you the work got to be put in. You know what I'm saying? And just that mindset of just unstoppable and then be able to develop a friendship with them, you know, over these years, 
you know, he, he a friend for me forever, but he's just somebody that motivate me so much. And, um, you know, unfortunately he was, you know, linked up last year, but look, let me tell you something. Uh, Julio Jones gonna be good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he know that, you know what I'm saying? He know, he know we love him, but he know, he know the business as well, you know? So I don't, I don't know, but I know, I know that's a beast that you don't want to disturb. You know what I'm saying? So, um, correct. Correct. So, uh, I, had to, I had to make sure I say that because in going to the mini Falcon games, like just watching you and watching Michael Vick and mm -hmm. watching him, like y'all special players, yo. Mm -hmm. And what you said is really important. How he always handled himself with class. Yeah. Because if I was, if I had a body like his, man, <laughs> and I was as fast as he is, man, that's the way you like, like I would be doing this shirt naked. I'd be doing this interview naked. Man, I'm telling you, man. It, I don't think people understand. It, it really take effort for him to be that humble. I mean, like, I mean, he definitely. You, that, you know what I'm saying? Like that. And that's to be commended. You know what I'm saying? When you like as good as you are, and you can really do what you want, and then you just you know that you can do. I think the fact that he know that he can do whatever he want is enough for him. You know what I'm saying? He just trying to you know get his money, win some games, and you know what I'm saying. So look, man, that's that's that's. That's who you want to model you. That's that's the standard. You know what I'm saying? Um, and he always been a selfless teammate. He always been motivating. And um, so yeah, man, that's that's the standard of greatness. And I, 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 plenty of plenty of good football ahead for, for, for my boy, man. So absolutely. So, so Jalen, we know we got we know we got to let you go. Um, but before we do, I do have to tell you that we know that you're a big Lions fan. But hey, the Lions play the Falcons this year in December in Atlanta. So is there a chance that you could maybe wear like a half Lions jersey and a half Grady Jarrett jersey now that you've been on the pod. <laughs> so ain't coming up I'm going to represent my guy, G for Darwin, <laughs> because none of them asking me to be on a pod. He did. Yeah, that's why I'm That's why I'm here. So you number one, Detroit is 10 toes down. That's my hometown <laughs> team. Mm -hmm. I, I done seen your squad go to the Super Bowl. Let me tell you a secret. The Lions have never been. <laughs> We won one playoff game in 61 years. I think they'll be okay with me wearing a half jersey for a game for somebody I got love for. All right. Hey, I've definitely been up history for the last 50 years. Grady, Grady, we'll have to figure out how to make that happen. Well, Jalen, we really, as we said, really appreciate you coming on. Big fans of your work. And we, Grady and I will both look forward to watching you on NBA Countdown do, do your thing over the next couple of months. Thank you. And I'm definitely going to be at that Lions game, too. And it ain't going to be no half and half. I'm going to be rocking my guys' jersey. Cause I'm gonna yes, be sir. I'm going to put on a show for it. you, too, man. That's how we do put on a show for you, too. Appreciate that. Yes, All love. Thank you, brother. Well, I think I was a Jalen Rhodes fan before. But yeah. now, wow. I mean, yeah. Like, <laughs> what a whole, like what a smart guy. What an entertaining guy. And when you talk about, like, who you aspire to be in terms of yeah. your post- playing career or for mm -hmm. me as a broadcaster just mm -hmm. hearing his versatility yeah. I mean he's doing it the right way and I thought everything he said was so enlightening what what was your favorite thing he said I don't know it's so it's hard to pick a favorite you know so so many things were just just I mean I was just 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 taking it all in just just in all you know what I'm saying just listening to him really really the most impressive to impressive things to me was how he balances, you know, all these different things and different roles that he have in, in life. You know what I'm saying? While still having a full, you know, family at home and, um, you know, so, so just whether it's being a producer or, you know, uh, be, being behind, in front of the camera, behind the camera, you know, in the community, um, that's, that's just, you know, that's, he, he doing it right. He doing it the right way. You know, man, that's the gold standard right there. And, uh, and the thing about it is you hear him speak, he only trying to get better, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, he just not slowing down, never satisfied mentality. And, um, you know, that's something that I definitely, definitely admire about him and, and aspire to be, you know, this just, this whole conversation just motivated me some more, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So just well, to be a better player, whatever it may be. And I think what I like most about him and the way he is on air is he kind of seems like you're just sitting down to have like, a cup of coffee with someone or just like you're talking to your friends like it's mm. almost like he has like a level of comfort that he makes his audience feel and yeah. I think that as you know an aspiring broadcaster that's a level that I'm trying to get to where when people listen to me they're not listening to me for anything other than they want to hear what I say and they like hearing the things that come out of my mouth yeah um yeah without a doubt he gonna tell you the truth you know good bad and indifferent and that's what I respect most yeah about. for sure mm -hmm. well I thought 
a really interesting part of our conversation with Jalen was, of course, about his community work and what he's doing with that Jalen Rose Foundation. He he undersold what he's doing. I mean, if like creating a school and he um he actually was just back there, um, you know, advocating for the students um in and everyone in Detroit to get vaccinated. Yeah. Like he does so much in the community. Um, it's it's incredible. But I want to use this time right now to talk about you and what you do in the community because I know that. You you'll talk a little bit about it, but Grady, what you do in the community of Atlanta in of in the city of Atlanta is just it's really outstanding. And I, and I want to take the opportunity here to give you um, some time to talk about some of your upcoming projects and some of the things that you're most proud of that you've done in the community. Yeah, so um, some upcoming things, you know, um, COVID has presented some challenges with with things as far as you know, um, uh, like like fundraising events, you know, that go towards Grady Gives that help us um, do what we need to do in the community. I think the biggest new addition to, um, to you know, our team of Grady Gives is um, we, out in Kyrens, we're building out a, a teen center, you know, it's called the Grady Jarrett Teen Center. It's a, basically just a safe place for kids out there, you know, whether you're in athletics and need a place to go study, you know, just to hang out, you know, basketball courts, football fields, swimming pool, um, study rooms, and um, just just there, just uh, something like that, just out there that, um, you know, just, just getting started, you know, and um, in my pursuit of trying to find ways to continue to impact the community in a positive way. Um, we also given out scholarships this year, um, you know, to, to a select group of kids um, going to universities. Wow. Um, so, so that's something that we're definitely doing. Um, so just, 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 you know, trying to continue to impact lives positively, grow the brand, you know, all the partnerships, you know, Grady Hospital, you know, Children Healthcare of Atlanta, um, Georgia Power, uh, you know, it's so many, it's just a couple more, I don't want them to get mad at me for not mentioning them, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they know it's all love, you know, so just, just trying to find out where we can, you know, just make positive impact and, you know, um, whether it's, you know, just have bigger outreach. That's yep. that's that's the great thing about these partnerships because you got organizations that's trying to do good as well, and I'm trying to do good. So you link up, and it's like let's let's do it together. Go to change know? the world. Yeah. yeah, for sure. What? How did you start the Grady Gives program? Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So it just really started from um, I, I was big in the anti-bullying. You know, big men don't bully, and um, and you know I went to schools talking about you know basically just spreading love and just being a positive role model and just treating people nice stuff like that. Because during that time, there was a lot of kids going through, um, through bullying stuff and it's making like national news and stuff. And, and I just thought, you know, um, you know, what better, um, you know, way to use my platform. Me as a big dude, you know, being a um, defensive lineman, but still, you know, treating people with respect, what, how I can, you know, make that into something. And, and it helped, it helped a lot of kids, but I sparked, more interest in other things that I wanted to do, you know, outside of just anti-bullying. Anti-bullying is still under the umbrella, but, you know, um, you know, whether I wanted to go, you know, visit some people at a hospital and make them make, make a brighter day, you know, or like give, give some money and food here or to, to fund this event, whatever it may be, or to feed the homeless here or, or give some kids gifts here. And um, um, really just, I mean, I, I wanted to create an umbrella to where, you know, Grady gives, you know, it don't say Grady gives this, Grady give that, Grady give what you need, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, if, you need a, <laughs> if you need to talk, you know what I'm saying? You need some motivation, you know, you, you got to get out of a dark place, you know what I'm saying? Just just whatever it may be, you know, I think God has blessed me um, to, to have a, um, you know, uh, ability to communicate with people and just use my story to help motivate somebody else, you know what I'm saying? And uh, use the things that I go through in my life uh, as motivation for the next person, you know, everything I go through, you know, everything, you know, it's not all, you know, all good, you know, and you don't always see the pitfalls that people have, but you can take those, you know, dark moments, you know, that you spend in your dark time and make light to somebody else. And that's what Grady Gibbs is about. So, uh, so yeah, that's, 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 that's what it is. That's awesome. Hey, you know, the podcast is you giving back too, because yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that are listening to mm -hmm. this, that are fans of yours that, mm -hmm. you know, they see the way that you're handling your life and it, I'm sure it motivates them to, to be just like you. So I have an idea. Why don't we 
whenever the Grady Jarrett Teen Center comes mm-hmm. out, we'll take the podcast on the road oh, yeah. and we can show off oh, yeah. the Teen Center on yeah. the pod. Without a doubt, we gotta do that. <laughs> Definitely gotta do that. You know what I'm saying? But but just be able to um, have people listen to you. You know where to do. I, I used to tell people that I was like nervous, also like talking to crowds because I always wasn't wasn't the most comfortable, whether it's like public speaking or whatever, maybe. If you say things, you know, you're worried about everybody catching the message and you want to impress everybody, you want to do this. If you say one thing that impress one person out the crowd, man, you could change your life forever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You going but you're gonna say things that impress more than just one person. Or but if you know, um, the podcast is for, you know, people to take what they take from it, you know, apply it to their lives however they may, may be, you know. Everybody on here not a football fan, everybody on here not not an athlete, everybody, you know, but you can take something from the podcast and apply it to whatever you into, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah, if you, if you like it, awesome. You know what I'm saying? If you, it's not for you, it's not for you. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's, that's what I like about the podcast. It's, it's just so, um, you can just be real on here, you know, just, just talk it up. <laughs> Get real, real with Grady, Grady Jarrett. Jarrett. All right. I feel like that's <laughs> the perfect ending for us. Grady, appreciate your time as always. And looking forward to hopping back on the pod with you next week. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs>